Hello and welcome to my Fallout New Vegas tips, tricks and fun stuff video. We'll be going through all sorts of stuff today and maybe even some tips here and there to help you along your way. If you enjoy this video, drop a like and a sub. It helps me out and gives me an idea about what you want to see. Now that that's all over and done with, let's get down to it. Okay, first one's first. This one's for the early gamers. So when you're in Good Springs, you can make your way up to this cemetery up here. You'll notice I have a shovel in my hand. You can get these from Chet for around 20 caps. Little known facts, if you head up towards the graveyard, there are certain graves that you can dig up and get loot from early game. It's often overlooked and a very, very helpful loot to start the game with. Um, here we go. In this one, we've got buff out. Heading over to the other one, opening this up, we've got 357 rounds. And in this one, a 357 Magnum revolver. You can get all sorts of loot from all sorts of graves. You do need a shovel to do it, however, you won't be able to open these graves without one. This one's a personal tip that I've not seen in many places. Always, always check post boxes. They have skill magazines, which are very handy if you get caught short without the skill that you need. Here's a cool one for Star Wars fans. If you head over towards Nipton, where you first bump into the Legion, not too far from War 4 Ranch, you'll be able to find Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, which is a nod to Star Wars. If you head over towards this broken building on the right-hand side here, without a roof or doors, you'll see two skeletons, and the Wild Wasteland trigger will happen in the top left. There's Owen. There's Beru. It's a cool one for Star Wars fans. Uh, here's a cool bit of mutation information regarding the uh, infamously friendly death call, which is on screen with you now. They, in fact, mutate from the Jackson's Chameleon, shown on screen right about now. They grow freakishly large and freakishly powerful. They are not to be trifled with. This is a cool reference. One of my personal favourites. That gun that you can get from Cliff Briscoe's gift shop in Novak is actually a reference to the gun in Blade Runner. This one's just here. How cool is that? Here's a fun fact. If you creep up on a Brahmin without it detecting you or attacking you first, you can push it whilst you're in sneak mode, allowing it to ragdoll and fall in some uh, interesting positions. To the eagle-eyed among you who might be Indiana Jones fans, there's a fridge just past Good Springs containing a skeleton with a suave gambler's hat. This is a nod to this scene from the Indiana Jones movie, although it didn't end too well for Indy in this case. This one is probably, in my opinion, one of the most obvious references in any video game. For those of you that don't know, the Kings of Freeside, that's not too far from the Strip, are probably the most obvious reference to Elvis Presley that there has so ever bad. been. So much so that if you visit the inside, follow to the room to your left-hand side, past Pacer, you will see the King, who is the leader of this outfit, who is none other than a reference of Elvis Presley My himself, the known as the King, next to Rexy there. This one you might or might not know. Uh, the New Vegas Medical Clinic, which is just outside of the Strip and Freeside, you can buy implants. Now, implants might not mean a lot to you, but you can increase your endurance, your intelligence. You can even buy implants to make you less vulnerable to damage. They cost a lot of caps, but if you have them spare, they give you a much needed kick for your survival in the wasteland. Um, Dr. Usanagi also has an inventory of stim packs and other medical related items. So if you can't afford the caps, you can always drop in and stock up on stim packs. Here is one of my all time favorite tips. I've given this to my brothers, I've given this to my friends. Head towards the Silver Rush in Freeside. They specialize in energy weapon sales. It's ran by the Van Graffs. Once you're inside, head towards the main desk. Find an item you would like. Pick it up, but don't click the prompt to steal it. You've got to carry it. Head towards the back room whilst carefully carrying the item, which will allow you to place it where you need. Open this door, and then there'll be another door you need to open as well. That is the bathroom. Pick up the item that you had a second ago, carry it into the bathroom, and shut the door behind you. You can then steal the item out of line of sight of all of the employees and sell it back to them. That's the best part. You can steal all of their stock and sell it back to them for a really, really nice caps boost early game. This one is cool, but slightly more brutal than the previous ones. If you head just past the Eldorado gas and service station, you can find the Sunset Sarsaparilla sign. Near the sign is the Lonesome Drifter. If you pop the Lonesome Drifter and loot his corpse, you will find something called the Mysterious Magnum. This is one of the more unique weapons in the game with the draw noise. Listen to it as I pull it out from my inventory. You get a little jingle as you pull it out and as you put it away.
Here's a fun one you might or might not know. Novak is called Novak because the bomb damage has resulted in the sign dropping off the remaining four letters. It's called Novak because it was no vacancy and we are now missing the A, N, C and Y. There we go. If you've got gear that you're struggling to find replacement items for to repair with, or maybe you don't have jury rigger, you can head down to the NCR outpost in the bottom left of the map. You can find in here an NCR soldier who will repair items for you at 100 repair skill. Heads up though, it's very expensive, although it is one of the only methods to fully repair your armor if you don't have a suitable piece to repair it with. On random lampposts throughout the wasteland, you will find occasional plaques that say TES-04, referencing the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Here's a cool retro nod. If you head towards Prim and go to the Vicky and Vance Casino, inside you will find a car. This is in reference to Bonnie and Clyde. Vicky and Vance, Bonnie and Clyde, see where this is going? Go inside and see a shot up car. A picture of Bonnie and Clyde's actual car is here. You can see the similarities. Here's a cool one for those of you that are quite late in the game. If you have just killed Mr. House or followed the quest line to do that and come back towards Good Springs, you'll notice if you visit Victor at his shack, he's now been deactivated. The classic cowboy icon is no longer on his face and he is just there as a sentient but non-moving robot. This one is probably one of the most unique weapons you'll see in the entirety of Fallout New Vegas. It depends on whether you do or don't have the Wild Wasteland perk as to which weapon you get spawn here. If you do have the Wild Wasteland perk, you'll notice in the distance there an alien spaceship up on the top of the cliff. If you have picked the Wild Wasteland perk, you will be getting the alien blaster. Now, part of getting the alien blaster means that you need to kill the alien captain. Once you kill the alien captain, you can loot their corpse and pick up the alien blaster and alien blaster cells. Heads up, however, the alien blaster is unique. The ammo is finite, and once you run out, it is gone. If you don't have the Wild Wasteland perk, in my opinion, you get the better weapon in the unique Gauss rifle. That is the YCS-186. It does incredible amounts of damage. It's a very, very effective weapon and is one of my favorites of all time. This one is perhaps the most unique and most bizarre find you'll have in New Vegas. If you head to Freeside and find Max running around here, he looks like he has a toy gun. That toy gun has the potential to be absolutely deadly. Once you use Helios-1 to power Archimedes, the Euclid Seafinder will be one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game. You can get it for 20 caps with a decent barter skill, I think a thousand without it. If you choose to power Archimedes to get Euclid Seafinder powered, you can use the laser to devastating effect. Fun fact, the Archimedes charge and the alien blaster cell are in fact the same model. The only difference is the color of the charge itself. And that's your lot for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. It's been one of the ones I put most of the work into, to be honest. It's a nice difference from all the shorts I've been making. Um, if you did enjoy, please hit like and subscribe. I appreciate it. I know it sounds really generic on YouTube now, but it really does help me out. If you want to see more of this, please let me know down in the comments. Um, I hope you liked, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.